So we've talked about machine learning, we've talked about language modeling, and we've talked about how language models actually work and how these probability distributions look like. Language models give us probability distributions over the next word, and ChatGPT just does this. Given a prompt, we pick a random word from the model's distribution to continue it, and we can do that repeatedly. And we can either pick a random word or we can pick a most likely word. Uh, I'm not going to go into the differences between those too much, but let's look at what happens when we do the random word strategy. If we have I want to blank, we ask the model what can come next, and it'll give us this distribution. And now we say, okay, I'm going to go with eat. I'm going to randomly pick that one. Now we can make a new input to the model, which is I want to eat blank, and we feed that in. And now it generates a bunch of options for us. And maybe we're going to get Korean, and then it's going to generate barbecue. Uh, and we can kind of keep going from here. So this shows you how ChatGPT generates an output. But what we haven't determined is how ChatGPT actually decides the probabilities of the words. And this process uses what's called a neural network. So what we need the system to do is we need it to look at this input that it's given, the words I want and to, and it needs to associate those inputs with probabilities over output options. So I'm going to kind of give you a high level intuition of how the a neural network does that. So the system has to know somehow that what we're going to be predicting is things that people want to do. And so it needs some way of understanding, based on seeing the word want, what things are more or less likely. And to do this, it's going to consult its parameters. And the parameters of the model are what are learned from data. We're going to talk about the learning process in a little bit. And what they do is they allow us to capture these kind of associations based on what we've seen in the past. So maybe if we see the word want, we should keep track of the fact that it's more likely to want to eat or swim. And so those get kind of a boost in their probability. And something like study gets a deduction in its probability. So a neural network has these kind of associations between the input and output and kind of tracks these values through many different layers of computation. I'm not going to go through the math of it, but uh, we can think about basically each word in the input having this kind of set of associations with things in the output. Now, where do we get these numbers from? How do we set the values of these parameters? This is the training process, where the way that these models are trained is they're fed a whole bunch of sentences taken from the internet. And it tries to change its parameters in order to predict them correctly. And through that process, it will take an initial set of parameters that are maybe not so good, and it's going to learn some better parameters, so it's going to do a better job at this prediction. In machine learning, we think of there as a training phase and a testing phase. So testing is like when you go on ChatGPT and interact with it. You're giving it uh, an input, and it gives you an output, and it doesn't actually get updated based on what you tell it. Or even if you there's a little thumbs up next to it, even if you click on that, it doesn't immediately change. Uh, over time, you know the creators of the system may decide to take that data you've given it and, and retrain it, but that doesn't happen immediately. All right, so. I said we feed the system a lot of sentences from the internet. So if we have the sentence, I want to play, we ask the model, OK, look at just the prefix, I want to blank, and now try to make a prediction of what you think should come next. And so the model will kind of crunch that, and it'll predict a distribution over possibilities. Again, this comes back to our probabilities. We have eat, swim, play, all the other words. And here we maybe didn't give play very high probability. But that was actually the word that was going to come next. So what we want to do is we want to tell the model, OK, you should change your parameters a little bit so that play should be more likely. And this uses a bunch of calculus with a procedure called backpropagation. And essentially what it does is it looks at all of the 
parameters and it says, which of these parameters can I change and how can I change them in order to make the probability of play go up? And maybe once we've done that, we get a distribution that looks like this. So now play is more likely. And then you're going to go through your data and you're going to see other sentences that have, I want to swim or I want to eat. And so eventually these things will kind of fight it out and, and end up balancing at some final probability distribution that the model gives you. So the neural network that gets used in ChatGPT is something called a transformer. What a transformer does is it turns each word into a vector or a list of numbers, and then it applies a bunch of different transformations of this sequence by looking at each of these vectors and essentially using information about the other words that are around it in order to inform or change that vector. So the difference between this and what we've been seeing so far is now when we go to make our kind of predictions and say, okay, what impact does want have on these final probabilities? We're not actually just using the word want, we're using the knowledge that want occurs in this context of it's something that I want and it's something that we want to do. So by having seen the word in its context, we can make better estimates as to how it's going to change the probabilities of these outcomes. So what I'm showing here only actually involves one step of this transformation, but ChatGPT is a transformer that has 96 layers. And this is why it works so well. The transformer is a relatively complicated neural network that was only invented in 2017. And back then people were only using six or 12 layers of it. So in the past few years, it's gone from six layers to 96 layers, and that's part of why these systems have gotten so much better. This also gives it a lot of parameters. I'm showing here this plus 6%, plus 3%, minus 2%. Those, those would be examples of parameters, so there's three of those. ChatGPT has 175 billion of them, which allows it to really do a pretty good job of memorizing all kinds of stuff on the internet that it's seen in its training data. So that gives you a sense of how the training process works, how the model works, and how it actually produces these probabilities. That's the end of this segment.